Hello and welcome to this video on solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. Now suppose that we had a quadratic equation like this. Remember a quadratic equation is when you have an x squared term, possibly an x term and possibly a constant term as well, where a constant term doesn't have an x or any variables in it. Now what would we usually try to do if we're trying to do this by factorisation? Well we'd find two numbers which add to give the middle number, the 6, and times to give the last number, the 7. 7 is prime, so it can only be 7 and 1, or minus 7 and minus 1. But either way, whatever those numbers are, they don't add to give 6. So there's in fact no whole numbers which we could use to factorise this. Now, if you get an equation that you can't factorise, there's two approaches to solve it. One is to complete the square, which we explore in another video, and the other is to use something called the quadratic formula, which is like a ready-made formula that we can just substitute some values in. Right, so the quadratic formula is this. If ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, so we've got a quadratic equation with some number from the x squared, some number from the x, and some other number, then the solutions to this equation are minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And I'm going to explain what I mean by various things here, for example, the plus or minus. But that is the quadratic formula. So let's use this formula here to solve this particular equation here. We need the a and the b and the c that we can substitute into this expression here. So a is the number in front of the x squared, the coefficient of x squared as we say. Now what number do we have in front of that x squared? Well it's effectively 1x squared isn't it? If you have no number there it's effectively 1. So I'm going to explicitly write out a is 1 to make it easy to substitute in later. What is b? So b is the number in front of the x. In this case it's 6. It's 6x. The b is 6. And then finally the c is whatever the constant term is, the number on its own. So we've got c is 7. And make sure that you have 0 on one side. This quadratic formula only works if you've got 0 on one side, and we do. So we've got these numbers, so let's just substitute into this equation. We've got x is equal to, let's have a fraction, minus b, so minus 6, plus or minus, I'll explain what that means in a second, the square root of b squared, so 6 squared, which is just 36, minus, I tend to put a bracket here, but you don't actually need it, um, 4 times a times c, so 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 7, all over 2a, so it's 2 times 1, which is 2. So, now we can put this onto our calculator. I'm going to press the fraction button first, and then I'm going to do at the top of the fraction, in the numerator, minus 6. Now let's do the positive solution first. So what the plus or minus means is that we get two different values from this. We get a value when we use plus, and a different value usually when we use the minus. So if we do minus 6 plus in the first case, so minus 6 plus the square root of 36 minus 4 times 1 times 7. Let's go to the bottom of our fraction, put the 2. Uh, and that actually gives us minus 3 plus root 2. And we could, if we wanted, press the SD key to get it as a decimal. So I'm going to give it to three significant figures and we get minus 1.59. Or we also get a value when we use minus instead here. So if I go back, I can actually use the same expression. I can press the left key. You can do the same on your calculator. I go back to where that plus was from before. I delete it and put a minus instead. So it's minus 6 minus the square root. Press equals. And this time we got minus 3 minus root 2 this time. Uh, and if I do that as a decimal, I get minus 4.41. So there we go, those are two solutions. And you can see they're not nice whole numbers. Right, let's do some more examples. And I'll try and speed up. We've got x squared plus 5x plus 3 equals 0. And a note, by the way, that you do actually need to memorise this formula for the new GCSE. We first start by writing what our a, b and c are explicitly. And don't skip that step because you're like to substitute them wrong otherwise. So a is 1, b is the number in front of x, which is 5, and then c is equal to the 3. And then we just put in our formula, so we've got x is minus b, so minus 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 25, minus 4 times a times c. So 3 all over 2a to and then you do calculate it again once with the plus. So I'm going to do it. 
and I get minus 0.697. Remember that if it's zero point something and you want to give three significant figures, we start counting from the first non-zero digit, so be careful. And then we do or, and then I can go back and modify that plus to a minus, and this time I get minus 4. 0 0.30. And remember, you do need that zero. That does count as a significant figure. Right, second one, I've got x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals 0. So this time a is 1, b is minus 4 this time, because there's minus 4 in front of the x, c is 2. And be very careful that you observe the signs in the equation. So this time, when I sub it in, I've got x is, well, what is minus b? Well, it's minus minus 4, which becomes positive 4. And we've got plus or minus the square root of, and be careful when you do b squared. What is minus 4 squared? Absolutely do not write this in your working, minus 4 squared, because what's the problem here? Well, the problem is because of bidmus. Basically, powers come before kind of subtraction or negation. So in this case, your calculator would first do 4 squared, which is 16, and then do minus that, so it'll give you minus 16. When actually minus 4 squared is actually positive 16, because negative times negative is positive. And one way to get around that is to just do it in your head. Well, what is minus 4 squared? Minus 4 times minus 4 is 16. But if you were to do it in your calculator, just make sure that you put the minus 4 in brackets. So you do minus 4 in brackets squared, and that absolutely makes sure that you've got the minus 4 first, the negation comes first, and then you do the squaring. But I think it's easier just to do it in your head. So we've got b squared minus 4 times a times c. I'm not going to bother the brackets this time because Bidmus will sort that out. It will do the multiplication first before that subtraction over 2a. So you've got the 2 there. And then I could work that out in the same way as before. Let's do a question. We've got 2x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0. So we've got a is equal to 2, b is equal to minus 3, and c is equal to minus 4. And again, be careful when you substitute into the formula. We've got minus b, so that's minus minus 3, which is 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus 3 squared is 9, minus, and I will use brackets this time, 4 times a times c all over 2a, so 2 times 2 is 4. And the mistake that a lot of students make is that notice that we're subtracting what will become a negative value. If we work out this, 4 times 2 times minus 4, that is minus 32, so it'll be 9 minus minus 32, so we'll end up adding the 32, that'll actually be 41 under that square root. So let's do it without a calculator this time. We've got 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus, well we said that was minus 32, all over the 4 still, so I'm running out of space, and then that becomes 3 plus or minus the square root of, well what's 9 minus minus 32, it's 41 all over 4. And then we could put that in our calculator to work that as a decimal value. But if we leave it like this, we're actually giving the solutions in an exact way. When you have square roots of things, then you're giving an exact answer. And it might actually ask for an exact answer in the exam. Let's go into this fourth one. We've got uh, 2x plus 1 squared equals 3 minus x. And this time we don't have 0 on one side, and it's not in the form something x squared plus something x plus something. So what we need to do first, whenever you have any brackets in a quadratic equation, always expand them out first. So if we write the bracket out twice. So we do the 2x times the 2x, which is 4x squared. And we do that 2x times the 1 as well. So that gives us 2x, but we get an additional 2x from here. So it's 2x plus 2x, which is 4x. And we get 1 times 1, which is 1 equals 3 minus x. We need 0 on one side, so we don't want these things here, we want that to be 0. So we're going to add x to get rid of the minus x, so it's going to be 4x squared plus 5x. And at the same time we could subtract 3 to get rid of that 3, so it's 1 minus 3, which is minus 2. And then we can just do our usual shebang. So um, a is 4, b is 5, c is minus 2. And if I just write the quadratic formula again, we have x is equal to minus b, so minus 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 25, minus 4 times 4 times minus 2. All over 2a, so 8. And if we just simplify that rather than putting in our calculator, we've got minus 5 plus or minus 
the square root, that's going to be 25, and it's going to be plus, because look, this is minus 32, so 25 minus minus 32 is 57, all over 8, and we could put that in a calculator to work out those two values. And then finally we've got this applied example, so we've got the height of a rectangle is 5 more than its width. Its area is 20. Determine the width of that rectangle. So if we draw a rectangle, and it's, the height is 5 more than its width. So let's just say that the width was x. Now the height is 5 more, so it's x plus 5. And then we're told that its area is 20. So area is 20. Well, how do you find the area of a rectangle? We just do the width times the height, and that will give us an appropriate equation. So it's the width, x, times the height, x plus 5. And that gives us 20. So, we just need to expand out, as before, x squared plus 5x, and we don't want that 20 there, we just want 0 there, so we're going to subtract 20 at the same time, and then we've got a quadratic equation we could solve in exactly the same way. So we could do a is 1, b is 5, c is minus 20, and we could do a similar working to before. In fact, there is actually in your calculator a quadratic solver. So if you've either got the silver one or this new black one, the class with, you just go to the equation mode. So equation, uh, you select polynomial, quadratics examples of polynomials. Degree, that means what's the highest power. So we want 2, because it's x squared is the highest power. And then it just asks you for the a, b, and c. So I'm going to do the 1, b is 5, c is minus 20. And it will spit out the answer. So it's given me two answers. x can be 2.62 to three significant figures. Or it gives you minus 7.62. But the thing is, you can't have a negative width, so we reject that by putting a strike through it. And that means that's the width. So the width of the rectangle that we wanted is 2.62. And I'll finish by giving you this one test your understanding question that I want you to do. I want you to solve to three significant figures 3x squared minus x equals 5. You may want to pause the video at this point to have a go at that. Right, let's do it. Now, firstly, we don't want that 5 on one side. We want 0 there, so we're going to subtract the 5 from both sides. And then we write out a, b, and c, so a is 3. Now, what number is in front of that x? It's effectively minus 1x, so b is minus 1, and c is negative 5. And then we just use our formula. So x is minus b, so minus minus 1, which is positive 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so minus 1 squared is 1, minus 4 times a times c, minus 5, all over 2a. And then let's just put that on our calculator. And that gives us 1 plus or minus the square root of 61 over 6. And if we want it to three significant figures, that gives us, we get 1.47. Or if we use the minus case, where it's 1 minus the square root of blah, 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 then we get minus 1.14. Well done if you got that right.